guys, this is Mark with Swagit, and today I'm going to show you how to properly install and operate the Swagit S650 Swager. All right, so let's get started. First thing we want to do is make sure all the primers are removed from the system. Secondly, let's start with removing the prim spent primer cap. Now we want to remove the primer cedar assembly. And last, we want to remove the punch support bracket. That's it. All right, guys, now we're ready to install the Swagit Swager. Basically, the Swager gets installed with two screws with lock washers. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And right now, all we want to do is make sure that these are finger tight. Uh, maybe a little bit more, but basically we can't tighten that right now because there's very minimal adjustment required with our swager. So let's just go ahead and do that. And that's not tight. And now at this point, what we want to do is lower the turret and make sure that the swager goes through the, rot the rotary primer disc as well as the shell plate. And you can see that right there. Once we determine that, we have access to one screw right here. So let's tighten down that screw and make sure that the, that the screw is tight. Let's raise the turret and let's tighten the other. And these need to be pretty tight, especially when you're processing uh, anything with large primers that are like Lake City 308 or anything else like that. And you wanna check these periodically as you're uh, running, processing a bunch of brass. That's it, the swager's now ready to go. Now we're ready to swage. Uh, you'll notice I did install the tray to catch the brass as well as the sprint primer cup. Um, and obviously make sure that all of your brass you use case lube. You don't want that getting stuck in your sizing die. All right, we're ready to go. And you'll notice right here at this station, I haven't pushed forward on the handle and the brass right here is in there, is in there pretty firmly. And the reason for that is because our swage actually goes up inside the brass. And when I push forward on that handle, it will resize it. And there's a distinct feel to it. You'll notice right here. That, that pop that you heard was our swager actually going inside and reforming that primer pocket. Now, one of the main drawbacks of other, other swagers, especially ones that are spring-loaded, is that they will not have the, that spring will not have the ability to remove the, the swaging pin from the primer pocket. Obviously, we have this long handle right here, and we won't have any issue doing so. Here we go. Oh, this is the perfect one right here. You'll notice that this piece of brass didn't pop. And the reason is, is because obviously this was processed in the past or it wasn't a crimped piece of brass. Um, that being said, don't put too much force on the handle, too much pressure on the handle as it's not necessary um, as that primer pocket has already been swaged. You'll notice, well, that one again didn't need to be swaged, but you'll notice as we go forward, you know, there's a small bit of pressure right there to make sure you swage correctly. And it's as simple as that. And you'll come up with your, what you want to do is make sure that the handle's right here. You don't want to move that any more forward, and you're going to get the feel for it. Right there, that one didn't have to be swaged. That one's fine. This one, push forward. And it's that fast. You know, you'd be able to swage between 800 and 1,000 rounds per hour using this system. A few more things, guys. I've had a lot of questions from people with concerns that the swager is going to hurt their press or their shell plate. Other swagers out there for the Dillon 650, the actual swaging unit will come up and come in contact with the shell plate if the shell plate isn't adjusted properly. There's like four or six thousandths clearance there. If you notice on our swager, which really doesn't depict this in the video very well, 
there is 20,000 or more clearance from the swaging pin to the shove plate, therefore it can never hit. Also, our swaging pin goes up through the rotary primer disc, which aligns the swager to the shell plate. There won't be any damage done to your machine. The second thing is, after running about 150 rounds, um, especially with the Lake City 308, make sure you double check these two screws that they're tight. They tend to loosen up a little bit, especially with difficult brass like Lake City 308. And the last thing is, our swaging pin does not require any lubrication, but you want to make sure that you remove any debris from from the face of that pin. That will just make uh, the pressure that you need to go into the primer pocket a little bit more difficult. Well, that's it guys. I hope you enjoy the swager and I look forward to your feedback.